Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. As a, I would say, at least a normal person, when we make a decision, we make decision after we consider the consequences of our decisions. Therefore, before you know, you act, you think, and you say, okay, what could be the consequences if we do this, if we do this, if we do that. And then you measure, you know, cost benefit, and then you act upon that. Now, a lot of people talk about removing Putin from power and all these bad dudes in Russia. But then the next move is, who are you going to replace them with? And uh, it seems like United States of America does not have a good uh, plan after they just go burst in and uh, everybody. You can see what happened in uh, Iraq. You can see what happened in Afghanistan or in Libya. And they want to do the same thing in Syria. And they are thinking of doing the same thing in Ira Iran. Now, in Russia, uh, Russia is none of these countries because of its uh, military power, political stand and all that. It's not the same. It's a different category. So the consequences will be, could be uh, not uh, of the, that, that magnitude as it was in Iraq, as bad as they were, Iraq and the countries I mentioned, but could be, you know, uh, we can uh, witness, if they allow us, a finale with our existence. And we don't want that. So one of these guys that could be uh, one of uh, Putin's successful success, uh, successors uh, is his bodyguard or the one in charge of the Russian security forces, which is a group of about 200,000 um, people. Now, he, uh, Putin, got this together as, I would say, uh, uh, a, um, AS, is that how they call it? Uh, SA, SA troops. Um, by the Germans uh, in the 20s and 30s. And Hitler took care of them uh, in one night. I think it was the night of the long knives. So, uh, oh. so let's see what's going on here. We have Putin arming with heavy weaponry his uh, security forces. Now that could mean a number of things. So let's start with this. Uh, read by reading this article from Business Insider. Uh, this information comes from the UK Intel. Okay. Russia's 200,000 strong National Guard is getting armed with heavy weaponry in a sign of its growing importance to Putin, UK Intel says. So this is the guy. Now, I'm going to show you the guy who's in charge of this uh, security forces. And I don't think you want that guy. <laughs> Just I remember when I first saw the face of that guy and faces sometimes express a lot of uh, uh, traits of character, I would say. I know it's just uh, in my mind, it's just like that. But hey, it's a cultural thing. You can't discard it. Uh, I learned in the culture of Romania, which is equal to any other culture, I'm told. Uh, there's no better or worse. I've been told that beauty and uh, evil shows on people's face. Am I not beautiful? Okay, let's move on. So here you go. We got Russia's, Russia is granting its 200,000 strong National Guard force heavy weaponry, the UK Minister of Defense says. This shows how the Kremlin sees the force as key to ensuring quote unquote regime security per the Ministry, per the ministry of Defense. I don't have a lot of confidence in this guys' IQ level. Uh, why? Because of previous statements and accusations and intelligence reports. While its leader bragged of its response to the Wagner mutiny, there's no sign indeed it did much, the Minister of Defense said. It's like uh, someone will tell you that um, there's no sign in uh, what's going on over there. Blah, 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 blah. The fact that you don't see it or you're not allowed to see it, it doesn't mean it didn't happen. But hey, they say there's no, no, no evidence. That's fine. Maybe no evidence. But the fact is, according to you guys, these guys are getting heavy weaponry. So let's go and see who this guy is actually in charge of these guys. 
Russia's 200,000 strong National Guard force is likely to be armed with heavy weaponry in a sign of its growing importance. Okay, the UK Ministry of Defense said in an intelligence update on Tuesday that Putin signed a measure into law on Friday that allows Rusgardia to be equipped with heavy weaponry. It described Rosgardia as a sprawling organization of up to 200,000 frontline personnel. End quote. The Minister of Defense noted that the decision came after the uprising of the Wagner mercenary group in June, which involved a paramilitary force taking over military headquarters in the key region city and marching towards Moscow before a deal was struck to have it stand down. I think here we're told, get the, huh? I was gonna mow you down. The leader of Rosvardia, Putin's former bodyguard Viktor Zolotov, said that his forces performed excellent during the mutiny, the Minister of Defense says. Now, let's see who Viktor is. The Viktor, all right, we got him right here. Here's a picture I choose for you. Um, you make, uh, you can look at him. This is a, a very nice taken picture, half, you know, uh, white, how half black or shadow, sun, good, evil, however you wanna consider. And you can find him in other instances, but I thought this was a uh, very telling picture. So this is Viktor. Remember this guy's name's Viktor Zolotov. Now, Mr. Viktor Zolotov, could become the future leader of uh, Russia. Why? Because potentially his troops can take over Red Rover, if you know what I mean. The same thing with the US president. The US president has no uh, direct authority over the uh, secret services in the White House, for instance. That means if the secret services in the White House receive a little order, they will have to do it regardless of what the president says, because those are his direct orders, not this guy here. Therefore, you got these uh, security forces, which probably are a little bit outside of Putin's uh, uh, proximity, but nevertheless. Now, why would Putin do this? Well, it could be because he said, well, maybe we need these guys to help us. In case what? In case, I don't know, maybe the military, maybe some people think of uh, destabilizing Russia. Maybe Putin doesn't feel uh, secure enough. That could be. Maybe he wants to be more secure. That could be. Maybe he intends of sending these guys eventually to the front, which I don't think he's going to allow himself to be so uncovered. I mean, 200,000 people are not around him in Moscow. You know, they are distributed and so on. But it's a big force. And uh, uh, if there's, a, as I said, a SA troopen, then uh, that's not good. Because uh, whatever happens, uh, you got 200,000 potential people. Um, I mean, people, potentially, uh, following your orders and victors. Uh, Viktor Orban, what the hell, Viktor, I got all these victors here. Potentially coming and rescuing you from whatever. So I'm pretty sure, not pretty sure, I'm 100% certain that Putin has his, uh, um, how do I call it, plans already set in place in case this happens, I'm going to do this. If this happens, I'm going to do this. If this happens, I'm going to go there. And I'm pretty sure he's got all his uh, loyal friends and uh, uh, former, how should I put it, uh, former um, compatriots, or not compatriots because they're still there, co co-workers, not co-workers, um, people that he cooperated with, let's put it this way. He, he got them and uh, if something happens, you're going to see Putin probably popping up in another uh, oblast, big oblast or region with nuclear weapons and everything in place for a second Russia uh, with all the resources necessary to survive over there, over there forever or the connections made. I'm guaranteeing you Putin, if he doesn't, he's an idiot, but I don't think he's an idiot. Uh, if I were him, I would already have a location set. Location, not a hut somewhere in the woods, but you have your own guys, own military, nuclear weapons, uh, resources, so you don't need anybody around. So if something happens in Moscow and he flees, he can fly or goes away, he's gonna go right there and that's gonna be, say, okay, now I'm gonna kill up, leave me alone. And ICC court is gonna pop, pop, pop. The Americans are gonna be like, uh, uh, and so on. I mean, if he doesn't do that, that, uh, or 
I don't know, he's 70 years old, but still you don't want to die like, uh, what's his name, uh, Gaddafi or like Mussolini, right? I, these two examples are the most expressive of uh, humanity. I think how we, uh, human race, <coughs> civilized ourselves in this long uh, history that we have on this planet that tells you how great we are. And not only, there are many other examples like, I don't know, blowing uh, two cities in two days. <laughs> I don't know, 200,000 people disappeared in two days. That's another sign of humanity, of civilized world. Thank you very much for being with me again today. So, be careful uh, what the next move is. Take Putin out. Who's gonna be? Navalny or something? <laughs> the weasel? No. Stay strong, stay smart. Look for the truth and be just.